Hi hey everybody, it's Policies here and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we have some pretty funny and interesting news. Mark Cuban, the billionaire Dallas Mavericks owner in the Boston Shark Tank, said that he would shove out 10 million bucks in exchange for a four hour interview that can be used for any charity of his choice. This appears to be another way for Cuban to taunt Donald Trump, as he has been doing this frequently on late night talk shows. Mark Cuban even said that during the one-on-one -on -one interview, he won't even bring up Hillary Clinton or what she has said and what she has done. And he even sweetened the deal by saying that if Trump wanted to keep the cash and just put it in his pocket, instead of giving it to charity, that he could do that. He would just write in a check and say, here you go, for 10 million bucks. He could use it for his campaign. He could use it for his uh, $650 million worth of debt. Or he could use it for a charity, make himself look great. The only people that would be in the room would be Cuban, Trump, and a broadcast crew. Nobody else would be allowed. So it's just straight up two people talking about key issues. So far as you can expect though, Donald Trump has not responded to this request. But he did come out swinging against Mark Cuban, say, saying that he isn't smart and has no idea what he's doing. Cuban came on Fox recently and he said, look, your economic plan is, is obviously number one, tax reform, number two, scaling back regulation, number three, tapping into energy, and number four, making sure that trade deals are advantageous to America. But billionaire Mark Cuban says, if that plan goes through, there's going to be a market sell-off, Mr. Trump. Listen to what he said. I want to get your reaction. Roll this fight. I have my Trump hedge on. In the event Donald wins, I have no doubt in my mind the, the market tanks. And so I literally have put on a, a more than 100% hedge really? that I'll, kick, I'll, I'll put on stronger. How do you respond, Mr. Trump? Well, I know Mark, and you know, the problem with Mark, he's not smart enough to understand what we're doing. He's really not smart enough, in my opinion, to really understand what's going on. Uh, I've known him for a long time. He's, he's tweets me all the time. He sent me so many different tweets and calls me, uh, although I must say not over the last number of months because I said, look, this guy would he'll send out so many tweets. I have to, I'll have to send you all of the Mark Cuban tweets and uh, conversations. But Mark is not, I really believe, not smart enough to understand what's going on. He's a mixed up guy. I mean, and and I, think, I think this, look, I think that this plan is a great plan. We're in trouble. Explain to Mark we have 20 trillion dollars in debt <laughs> now we all know that donald trump would never take this deal even if he needed the cash he still would not take it trump would be walking into a slaughterhouse just like donald trump mark cuban can't be bought off and he would ask questions that these sellout journalists on fox news and msnbc and cnn are not able to ask it would be the battle of the billionaires and Mark Cuban would not back down on anything. He would interrupt him, he would attack, and he would ask tough questions that people really want to hear. It's really kind of interesting how many journalists get scared when they run into power. When they meet people that have a ton of money, or that is a powerful politician or some billionaire, they freeze up. They get nervous. And when they start to attack the power, they begin to back down when the power pushes back. They feel the strength. The perfect examples when Trump was on the commander in chief form recently, uh, where Matt Lauer, Matt Lauer got dominated by Trump's alpha male presence. And the morons on Fox and Friends shiver when they meet Donald Trump, when they start to ask him questions. Donald Trump just interrupts it and says, excuse me, excuse me, and they completely back down. They get terrified. These aren't real journalists. They are spineless and sad and pathetic and pitiful and really discredit the whole industry which is why now over 60 percent of the population agree that the media is weak and does no good anymore but mark cuban who can consider himself an equal with donald trump in terms of the amount of cash he has would go straight after his throat nobody can pay him off nobody can say back down nobody can say don't ask those type of questions he can say whatever he wants with zero repercussions but as i said trump would never do it in fact this would actually backfire against Mark Cuban and actually help out the Donald Trump campaign. It just brought a lot more publicity. A lot of people were tweeting Donald Trump, saying, hey, Mark Cuban has challenged you. He was all over TV again. He got uh, Trump another chance to go on Fox News and talk about how stupid he thinks Mark Cuban is. It just helped Donald Trump even more, actually, because Donald Trump doesn't care if it's bad news or good news. He just wants to be on the TV. That's it. 
But this actually reminds me of the primary of when Donald Trump said that he would debate the Democratic Socialist who was running against Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, for the tune of 10 million bucks. Even after news channels and also alternative media channels like the Young Turks pushed it to happen, with Bernie Sanders saying he would totally do it, Trump ended up backing down, knowing that he would get slaughtered by Bernie Sanders. Trump would acquire nothing from that debate with Bernie Sanders, just like he would acquire nothing if he interviewed with Mark Cuban. But if he did battle Bernie Sanders, let's be awesome. That would have been awesome. It'd be the classic socialist debating with the classic corrupt capitalist. A once-in-a-lifetime battle. But of course, Trump dropped out saying that he would rather go against the winner, Hillary Clinton. He just found a cop-out to get out of that. But the real story here isn't Mark Cuban offering $10 million to ask Trump tough questions. That's not the story. The real story is how Mark Cuban changed from being a hardcore Republican and Trump supporter to really getting behind Clinton's campaign in any capacity he can. A real supporter. That's something you don't see very often. And it should be examined in more depth by progressives, Republicans, and Democrats. Even hardcore Republicans and millionaires and billionaires should be looking at why is Hillary Clinton attracting all this extra money from these billionaires that typically fall behind Republicans? Even the even Koch brothers, who almost always fund Republican campaigns. They were bankrolling Mitt Romney. They bankrolled George Bush. Um, they bankroll all, uh, pretty much, they bankroll pretty much all Republican senators have not come out in support of Trump. Instead, many of these guys, not, not the Koch brothers, but many of these guys have come out behind Hillary Clinton including uh, uh, Bloomberg even has done it, um, uh, and Meg Whitman and many others have also come out, these billionaires have come out supporting Clinton. But the real story is um, Bloomberg kind of captured it in an article um, and pretty much said that uh, Mark Cuban switched over to uh, Hillary Clinton because he realized that Donald Trump wants to cause a lot of damage to this country. He's actually an idiot, a complete moron, a buffoon. Donald, uh, Mark Cuban said he realized that Donald Trump wants to tear up our, our treaties with our allies, including Japan and Europe. Uh, he wants to uh, dismantle NATO. He wants to rip up all our trade deals that we have established with these different countries. Um, he doesn't have any idea what he would do with taxes, the economy. His immigration policy is simply build a wall and deport 11 million people and rip up families. Um, Mark Cuban has looked into the terrible things he has said about women, what he has said about minorities, what he has said about Mexicans, what he has said about pretty much every single group. And then Mark Cuban went ahead and the, ar ar the ar article points out Mark Cuban went ahead and looked into Hillary Clinton's stances and accusations that have hit her, including uh, the Benghazi scandal and the email controversy. And Mark Cuban went ahead and said, hey, none of this stuff is based on fact. All this stuff is just Republican uh, media trying to take Hillary Clinton down. She wasn't indicted for any of these types of things. And Mark Cuban, uh, being a smart man, I mean, he came, he's a rag from, he's a rags from riches story, smart man realized that this is all trash. And that Hillary Clinton, although he didn't agree with everything she said, he, he at least she had detailed plans and he could predict what she would do so he could want it, so he can go ahead and adjust his stocks and do his business because he knows Donald Trump is a wild card. You don't know what he's going to do. And if you are a Donald Trump supporter listening to this, please leave a comment telling me in detail what is his tax policies? How will it impact the middle class? What is his policies towards um, uh, immigration? You can't just deport 11 million people. What is, his, how, what is he going to do after he rips up the trade policies that we have with these countries? Look what's happening to the UK right now. They have no idea what they're going to do after they exited the EU. No idea. An economy has tanked. So I think it's, it's really quite funny that this is going on. And I know that most progressives would think that this is a terrible thing. But in reality, it's a great thing. This shows a unity behind Clinton that we haven't seen in many years, not even during the Barack Obama administration, not during the Clinton administration either. There's a unity behind Clinton between um, the Bernie supporters, the moderate blue dog Democrats, and quite a few Republicans and businesses have all come out behind her. When you think about it, not many candidates have been able to reach across lanes to build, to build allies. It's quite incredible. And that shows you that, yes, although Hillary Clinton is not this hardcore progressive like Bernie Sanders lived with Warren, she's able to get things done. She's able to get things done because she is a little bit more of a moderate and she is able to 
understand what these businesses want, understand where these different parties are coming from, and work together. Um, and that's why Barack Obama said she's the most qualified person in history to ever run. And if you think Barack Obama did a pretty good job these eight years, I think that Hillary Clinton will honestly do a much better job because she has a lot of experience. She knows all those senators. She knows all those uh, representatives in the House. And she could pick up the phone and call any president across the world, and they would know her by name. They would know her by her voice and immediately get things done. So um, I, I'm expecting to see more billionaires come out and more big businesses come out and support Hillary Clinton. And from a progressive point of view, I don't see that being a bad thing. I really don't. I think it's a great thing. Um, it's another way to stop Trump from becoming the president. Uh, so I hope you all like this video. If so, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe below. So we can get more videos like this. And I really appreciate your time. And I hope you guys have a chill and happy day. Peace out.